Hey guys, King Small Engines. We have a lawn boy with a Tecumseh engine and they're saying it's a no start. I haven't worked on this in a couple of years. I have worked on it, but it's been at least two years since I worked on it. So first thing we're gonna do with a no start, let's see what's in the fuel. So that's a half inch wrench. Let's uh, get that fuel ball. Nope, not a half inch. Huh. Let's see, should be a half inch, no? Huh. It's not a half inch and it's not a 9 16. That's interesting. Usually it's one or the other. Huh. Alright, we're gonna have to see what that is. If it's not a half and it's not a 9 16, then it's either metric or it's a Let's see, 9 16 half inch. So that would be 8 16 so that would be 16 30 seconds, so 17 30 second. All right, we'll grab one of those. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. That's at 17 30 second. And let's see what we got here. Let's try metric first. The metric fits. Ah, metric fits. So it is a metric. 13 millimeter and 13 millimeter. Yep, it's in between half inch and 916. 13 times four, so it's 520 thousandths. Yeah, that's what it is, 13 millimeter. Who would have thought? I'm assuming it's the original carburetor on this thing. So let's see what kind of gook we got in the fuel. Actually, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I need something to pinch off that fuel line. Be right back. All right, 13 millimeter, let's pinch off the fuel line and see what we got inside this bowl here. Well, looks like it's coming out fuel. Let's see what, it, what she looks like. All right, well, she looks pretty good. I don't see any water in there. It smells like fuel, so interesting. But one thing I do see, which is kind of strange, on top of the, uh, the jet, there's an O-ring. If you notice, oops, see that O-ring that's stuck to the top of the jet? That's supposed to be around the emulsion tube. So chances are, if that O-ring came off the emulsion tube, there might be a problem with the emulsion tube. So I'm gonna have to pull this carburetor off and look at that emulsion tube. Because that's not supposed to be on there as far as I know. Huh, interesting. All right, this carb's gonna have to come off. So let me uh, let me get some tools and uh, we'll take the carby off and we'll see what it looks like. It looks like a brand, brand new carby under there though, nice and clean. All right, be right back. All right, let's... Oh my God, all the muck in here, holy crap. It's full of muck. Everything is full of muck. Oh, lordy, lordy. Let's see what's in there. Sometimes they're, they're quarter inch screws in there. Maybe 5 16ths, let's see. There's so much dirt in there though, who knows? Oh, Lord Almighty. What the heck is in there? No, it looks like a hex. That's too big. Should be quarter inch. Yep, it's quarter, it's quarter inch, but it's full of dirt. Oh, I should have blown the hell out of this thing before I messed with it. My God, this whole thing is full of dirt. My God. Uh, full of dirt, guys. 
full of dirt. I'm gonna have to get my air gun and blow this thing out. There's so much dirt in here, you can't even get a, a wrencher, I mean, a, a socket in it. I'll be back. All right, we got all the mud out. Let's take this thing off. Dipstick. Yeah, the carbine. This is one of those fun ones. You got the PCV hose here. Crankcase ventilation hose. These are getting harder to find too, these carburetors. All right, so. All right. Actually, the easiest way to take these off, to be honest with you, is to take them off of here. And for that, you gotta take the muffler off. Muffler's a 10 millimeter. That's the easiest way to take these carbies off, is to take the muffler off first. No, it's not 10. Must be 7 16. Yep. That's the easiest way to get them off. Take them off with the intake manifold. These screws, those look like three eighths. Let's see, the three eighths are three eighths of ten millimeter. No, oh, not that tight. Uh oh, this one has a ground on it too. Ground wire attached. Hmm. Oh, it's got a double nut. Oh, that's fun. All right, let me. Uh, uh, can I reach in there? With the socket. Hmm. Might be able to reach in there with a socket. Yep. Yeah, I can just do it this way. Yep, that works. Take out the curb. Remember on this back bracket's where the governor spring goes. So you gotta remember that. Alright, you got your two carb screws off. Now you gotta look at your linkages. Take off your vent hose. That just stays over there. Now you got your governor spring on the top and your governor spring in the back. Alright, so we'll pull it off the studs. All right, you don't have to touch the back governor spring. You just have to touch this governor linkage here and the fuel line. And let's see if I can get the fuel line off without a plier. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, the fuel line is off. The link, oh, the linkage goes on like a hook. That's interesting. All right, and it's the closest one to the tab, so take that off. And we have our carby. So we're going to look and see. And you can see inside there where 
that's a pushed in emulsion tube brass so this looks like a chinese carb um, it's a pushed in brass emulsion tube so the o-ring just sits right on there so i don't have to take that out and it looks like it's clean i don't see anything wrong with it it doesn't smell bad or anything the float level looks good so all right yeah it looks all right so really not much for me to do on this thing i don't believe this emulsion tube comes out i'll try pushing it but i don't think it does oh it does come out okay i stand mistaken this emulsion tube does come out so let me pop that out The emulsion tube does come out. Let me take this apart and put it on the bench, guys, and I'll be right back. Okay, this carb had the brass emulsion tube in it. The O-rings had fallen off, so I've put them back on. But there's nothing wrong with the carburetor. The carburetor is perfectly clean. So I'm going to put it back together, and we'll see. Maybe it wasn't a carb issue. All right, let me throw it back together. We'll be right back. Well, guys... I think I'm guilty of cardinal rule mistake number one in small engine repair. Before you do anything, look at the spark plug. This one's a Denso, which probably isn't bad, but let's see. Looks new. Looks like it was firing, but we're gonna put in our we're gonna put a J19 LM in there. Because we like the J19 LM champion. Carburetor's back on, muffler's back on. We're gonna put the new plug in it. We're gonna put it on the ground and we're gonna see what we get. All right, let's put it on the ground. We'll put the bag on. Let's see what happens. Let me get you situated. Alright. These have a switch on the bag. So you have to have the bag on or else it won't start. So We'll put the bag on. All right. We will prime for a good time. Let's see if we got any juice. It doesn't sound right, guys. Something does not sound right. Definitely, something does not sound right. Huh. Let me investigate a little more. I'll be right back. Some don't sound right. <clears throat> We're back with this Lund Boy Tecumseh engine here, guys. Um, it would only run on prime. You'd prime it, it would run for a second or two, then shut off. Clean the carb three times, still the same thing. So I went out and bought a kit, Chinese carb kit, but I wanted to show you something. The carb that was in there was a Chinesium. The guy who owned this admitted to me that he had his nephew put on a Chinese carb last year. Instead of bringing it to me and saying, it's running kind of funny, it probably was just water in the gas, they took the old factory carb off and put on a chinesium carb and one thing you notice if you look on here what's missing there's a welch plug missing right there okay now i don't know if that has a lot to do with it only running on choke i'm assuming probably not but the new one i ordered if you notice both welch plugs are there okay so let me get this thing slapped on here and uh We'll see if she runs. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, all right, guys. 
the new carburetor is on the new <coughs> the new Chinese carburetor that's all set fresh fuel in it <coughs> excuse me let's see if the, let's see how it starts or if it starts all right So that's what it was. So if you ever get one of these Chinesium carburetors, make sure all the Welsh plugs are in there because with a Welsh plug missing, it seems like it made a difference on this one. All right, that's it for now, guys. Any questions, comments, suggestions, please subscribe and uh, whack the bell if you want to see more of my stuff. And we will talk to you soon. All right, guys, last part of this video. <clears throat> on this engine, it seemed like it was running a little high on the RPM, so I put my tack on it, and you can see it was running at about 3750. That's a little high. This engine should be about 3400. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust the RPM. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back with the uh, Lawn Boy, and I've taken the cover off the top so you can see where the adjustment is for the governor to adjust it. Let me zoom in on it. Make sure you get a good picture of it. Ooh. Yeah, right, right there. Okay. All right, guys, you can see the spring right here. Here's the governor spring, and there's a little tab right there to adjust it. Now, when I turned it on before, it was pulling about 3,750 RPM. That's a little too much. So I'm going to bend back this bracket a little now to take off a little RPM, and let's see what that gives me. All right. around 3450 I'm at 3424 so basically guys all you have to do like on a Briggs is bend the bracket for the governor spring to get the right rpm all right so now it's within range it won't be over revving it'll be good for the guy so all right that's how you do the Tecumseh vertical engine governor rpm adjust and people are asking me how do I know what rpm to set it for well you have a 21 inch blade okay 21 inch blade divide that by 12 that'll give you your circumference okay you take that circumference you times it or i'm sorry you take that diameter times it by pi that'll give you your circumference and that's the number of feet that one revolution spins okay so you take that all right one divided by that number then multiply it by the opei specification of 19,000 feet per minute and that'll give you 3450 roughly for RPM all right I'll put it down on a piece of paper at the end of this video and I'll show you how I calculated it and then we'll go from there all right got any questions give me a ring on the internet here Ken small engines with an extra s at gmail subscribe like and we'll see you guys soon